Hi everyone, Callum Williamson here, uh, here today at the 79th Luxury Living office in Southport. We're here with our whole team and we've just spent the day uh, meeting their whole team in office. Uh, when they first started they were just occupying the top floor of this building and now it's the full building. Um, they're doing some real interesting and, and exciting things with the products they're offering and the returns they're offering. Like I say, our team was doing training with, with uh, uh, Jake, David and Curtis Webster earlier. Later today and tomorrow we're going to go and visit a couple of the sites just to sort of show you what it's all about and hopefully bring what's going on here a little bit closer to you over there. Anyway, thanks, hope you enjoy the video and uh, I guess I'll see you at the end. I'm here with Georgia Peach. We're in the foyer of the 79th office, office and Georgia Peach is a uh, client relationship manager here at 79th. Does an absolutely outstanding job uh, sort of looking after our clients and staying in touch with people. So thanks for that, Georgia. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about your role at 79th, what you do and um, how long you've been here for, I guess? Yeah, so I was actually, it was my 12 month anniversary yesterday. Congratulations. So thank you. Well done. <laughs> uh, my role is just kind of obviously client rapport building, making sure that the clients have a good journey, um, helping hands on the first touch of contact really if there's any queries, questions. Yeah. Um, you know, if they just kind of want to have a chat about their investment, I'm here to give updates as well. Um, just kind of guide our, our clients through that investment journey and make them have the best investment that they can, really. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, well, like I say, the feedback we get from clients is that the customer service is, is absolutely outstanding. So uh, thanks to you guys again. It's our main priority, I'd say, definitely. With the 79th group, it's our main priority to provide a great customer service. Yeah. As I'm sure you're aware. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's uh, it's one of the most common you know questions or one of the most common states, statements we get is, you know, the customer care is amazing. So, yeah. um, so do you look after... Do you have sort of your own group of clients that you look after or a region or do, do you just sort of call you know anyone anywhere every sort of three months how does it how does the yes. how does that work so it's every three months so it's every quarter it's myself and olivia who's also a relationship manager in terms of how we manage that we just kind of take a low note each um so it's just every morning we'll come in put the date on our system mm -hmm. and then it kind of shows us a portfolio of who we need to call that day yep. um so how it works every three months their investments obviously if it's monthly if it was on the 29th we'll call them on the 29th of each month Sure. three months um but yeah we we just manage it from our system and we communicate likewise with, between each other who needs to contact who really a testament to your good work and the good work that uh jake curtis and, and dave and everyone here is doing i guess so anyway thank you very much appreciate that now with Olivia Vivella. Um, thanks for joining us and having a chat, Olivia. Right. Can you tell us please a little bit about your role within 79th and, and what you do, please? Yeah, so I'm one of the client relationship managers, same like Georgia. Yeah. Um, we talk to the clients all the time, um, make sure they're happy with the investments that they've got. Um, we try and check in every couple of months with them to make sure everything's running smoothly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, any, anything that they need, they come to us. We're like their first point of contact. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And how long have you been? How long have you been working here for? I've been here for six months. Okay. And how do you find? I mean, do you? Do we I love it. Always wear the hats. Or? No, not always. It's one of the boys' <laughs> birthdays, so we always try and do something special for the team. Lovely. And this is this is the this is the team of sort of customer care, client facing people yeah. behind us. Yeah. Yeah. So the the onboarding team's in there. Yeah. Um. There's a few team leaders that look after the onboarding staff um, and then we've got client care in there as well awesome well i think yeah from our perspective all of our clients are overseas and we don't really have anyone in the uk and one of the things they always talk about is the, the level of client service and the calls and stuff that great. they're always getting from you guys so you do a great job and um, thank you very much Here in the uh, the 79th offices, as you can see, um, joined by Jake Webster, uh, director here at 79th Luxury Living. We're in their podcast studio. Um, if you can't 
can't gather that. Um, <laughs> firstly, Jake, thanks very much for um, the training today and showing the team around and all that sort of stuff. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, we're here. Off, thank yeah. Thank you. We're here off the back of uh, CM3, which is launched today. Yeah. Um, can you tell us and our <coughs> investors and sort of people watching this video a little bit about CM3 and and what they can expect within that? Yeah. So, 79 Commercial Free is our expansion into the um, commercial commercial property sector. Um, as you well know, we've already already acquired um, a project. We've acquired quite a few projects in the pipeline as well. Yeah. And um, CM3 is our, um, our, our, our £25 million pound expansion plan um, to buy undervalued assets in the UK um, to take these assets and repurpose them from empty shells as they were left um, during the COVID-19 pandemic yeah. um, and then repurpose them into um, environments where people want to work, where small businesses can work affordably and um, flexibly um, on a flexible basis. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that demand is stronger than ever. Just to give you an example, Millennium Park we bought in December. Yeah. Um, that's making way for 58 new businesses um, in Warrington, in the Birchwood Boulevard area. Um, that's surrounded by, you know, an abundance of businesses um, in which occupancy rates are through the roof. Um, and we've we've got all those units rented um, and sold right. as well. So yeah. you can just see the demand from when we started that project um, and the actual sort of um, trajectory of the the actual, especially the instab instability of the market at the moment yeah. is playing right into our hands as we predicted, as we've been predicting for many many years. Um, yeah. You know, we said it five years ago. Banks would start to collapse. Here we are today. Yeah. Banks are collapsing. Yeah. Um, Credit Suisse, yeah. Silicon Valley Bank, um, and for us, we're all about creating value and assets um, that deliver strong returns for people, yeah. um, not just for the now, but for the the recessions that are looming on the horizon. So, I think obviously, you know, you have many clients who have invested into our projects over the years. Yeah. Um, and they all see the value in, in investing with us compared to other investment providers yeah. because of that attitude that we take or that strategy of basically developing value when the markets are as bearish as they can be. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I was chatting yeah. with um, Georgia, one of the customer <coughs> uh, sort of success ladies upstairs, yeah. and she was yeah. saying I think it's 96% of clients that come on board stay on board then don't they and go into new projects and yeah they do yeah i guess for people that are new to 79th um you know the cm3 is off the it's off the back of the success of cm1 which is you took yeah a, you took a was it an experian office in cm1 or, or something similar and yeah it was a, actually an office from a publicly listed company yeah, um, okay. in which we bought through um which was being offloaded by grant thornton yeah um the auditor um, and then we obviously acquired that through our connections yeah. um, and our reputation. Um, and basically, once we acquired that, then we pushed forward with the, the plan, you know, mm -hmm. what we're doing to that building, which is creating all of those units for yeah. small businesses to operate from. And so, and so, as you say, that's very successful post-COVID. Yeah. Is that, so it's CM3, the same sort of plan, it's to find those sorts of assets and yeah. do a similar sort of thing? Yeah, it, 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 that is the ultimate expansion plan. So it's doing exactly the same thing as CM1, but on a much larger scale. So we've awesome. we've got basically a at the moment a twenty million pound pipeline um, ready to be acquired, and yeah. um, that's why we have now launched the twenty five million pound offering, mm -hmm. um, because there will be more assets behind what we've already allocated to it. Awesome. Um, but investors um, investor sentiment dictates that you know seventy ninth commercial one subscribed within a record time. Mm -hmm. So seventy ninth commercial three. We've already had, you know, pre-subscriptions, as you well know, some yeah. from some of your clients, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, some from some of your investors, yeah. and that's great to see, you know, um, because we're all about doing different to everyone else. Um, we're not reliant on banks. We're not reliant on the stock market. We're not reliant on, you know, hedge fund managers in the city of London, getting paid, you know, a fortune where they just really don't care about anyone else's money. Yeah. Um, you know, we're a family, uh, family business. We have people here who are passionate about delivering people returns, yeah. um, and and that's what we continue to do throughout this sort of this era. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thanks, Cheers. Carl. Thanks. Go on. We'll go, go for on. it. Go on. <laughs> right. Kurt, thanks very much for for um, inviting us up to the office and and doing some training and having a chat with the team and showing us around. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, thank, you. yeah thank you very much.
we've got, I guess, people that will be listening to this and watching this are people, predominantly clients, but probably people that are fairly new to you guys and what you've done before. Mm -hmm. So some people might know the story, but for those people that don't, can you please just give us a bit of background, I guess, to yourself and then sort of where the 79th brand has come from? Yeah, I mean, in terms of myself, um, I mean, I'm only, I'm only 25 years old. Um, went through school, uh, set up various um, online retail businesses and did very well for myself all the way from my bedroom. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a great business. Um, <clears throat> managed to make a lot of money. Um, and then Jake and Dave were already you know, start, starting the 79th group yeah. in which I came on board um, at a later date, mm -hmm. invested all of my personal savings and the money I um, accrued from my businesses. Yeah. Um, and then ever since I've been part of the team um, in building this great company. Yeah, and it's it's wonderful to see. I know from sort of you know, Dave's been doing it for I don't know thirty odd years, yeah. and you were saying eight hundred and twenty-two pri properties in his private name before yeah. he retired. And uh, you know we've been with you sort of over the years, or working with you, and seeing the team grow from small to I guess what it is now. So it's been amazing to see. Um, can you please give us a bit of um, uh, you know a bit of insight into what it's like working, you know, running a family business, and and sort of how that works. Is it fun or? Uh, you know, yeah, just give us a bit of insight into that, yeah, if that's sure. okay. Um, I mean, I love it. To put it <clears throat> plain and simple, I absolutely love it. I, co I couldn't see myself working for anyone else other than myself and my family. Um, I think it, it's, it's the best pleasure anyone can have. You know, it's, it's a pleasure to come to work every day. We want to come to work every day. We want to do them extra hours. Everything's for the family, and it's important that because we are, we're responsible for making sure the direction of this company is is going in the right direction. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the weight is on our shoulders, and we make the the major decisions. Yeah. Um, it can be challenging at times. We all have mixed opinions, you mm -hmm. know, as we all do. Um, but I think it's important to say that we're all on the same mission. Um, we all have the same goal in mind, mm -hmm. um, and eventually we always reach an agreement, and it's always it always seems to be the right decision that yeah. we make um, because. We, we think long, long and hard about it. We discuss it <clears throat> within this office, but also in our free time, mm -hmm. also, which we don't get a lot of, yeah. um, as yeah. you can imagine. Yeah, sure. Um, no, but that's just, that's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. Um, I mean, this keeps us busy um, 24-7. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's great to see, you know, you do get the, um, you know, the feeling outside of the family, you know, the extended mm -hmm. family, which is everyone that works here. Yeah. And I think investors, to be fair, get a bit of that feeling as well when they're getting called every every couple of months and sort of yeah. getting checked in on to see how things are going and all that sort of stuff. So it does very much come across, I think, the passion. So, yeah. um, you know, well done to you guys and, and keep it up. Yeah, well, the, the investors almost an extension of the family. You yeah. know, this was this company was built on family funds and then it got to a level where we had to, we had no choice but to invite investors, um, more stakeholders to come and come for the ride yeah. and really um, push this company together. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, thank you very much, Kurt. And again, thanks for the hospitality you've showed myself and the team. Uh, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Guys, we're here at Ivy House today. Thanks for bringing us along, Jake. You're welcome. Yeah, to great here. to show you around. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this project? Yeah, absolutely. So we we purchased the project as it is. Um, as you can see over this way, um, it's got three buildings on it. Um, the pro this project was a refurbishment, so we've this is actually completed now, um, and then obviously tenanted as well, um, short term, and then obviously we've got planning permission in um, of these these projects here. Um, and then that's they'll, they'll develop out into four bed and five bed bedroom houses. So, excellent. Yeah, thanks for that. And can you tell us a little bit about how you finance a project like this? Yeah, so so we finance with our investors, our global based investors, um, and basically they lend us the short term capital. So that enables us to acquire the properties um, or projects like this, um, and then develop them out as well to a certain point, um, in which we obviously have an exit route um, for the project. Um, in terms of the, I think what we do differently is we mitigate risk at sort of every every stage, and we actually inject our own capital into these projects as well alongside our investors. That's yeah. excellent. And you mentioned an exit strategy. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Yeah, absolutely. So the, these basically will be sold on the open market um, to homeowners. So it won't be like the investor market. We're not relying on any sort of, um, you know, 
any, any sort of investor coming in and buying them, they'll be put straight on the open market at full value. And um, this one behind me will be, go on at just over one million pounds. Um, we're actually in a very exclusive area of South Wales at the minute. Um, being Skaysbrick. Um, so obviously we've got private schools locally, we've got new housing developments there, um, and this is pretty much for footballer belt of the North West. Yeah. Right, yeah. fair enough. Well, thanks, thanks very much. You're welcome. That, All right, thanks very, very much. Helpful. All right. That's why it was important that property was there in its current state because we weren't exposed for any more than what was already on it. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you came in and they were all like that, you'd be like, oh, you know, there's a bit more risk there, a little bit maybe too high for us. So it was about like we can always get our money back through that. Yeah, which is great. It's just put, you know, yeah, so it's win-win, it's win-win, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Then, yeah. You know, so, so, yeah. So, so yeah, fantastic. What, what about the build schedule? So, um, what, what do you envisage being uh, completion for the second? So season? these are all halfway through planning at the minute um, yeah. with what we've put forward. Um, so once plans plan's being granted, now West Langstead have got a bit of a delay. Yeah. If the action is now being granted, it was slow and set. Um, but I think once plans being granted, we look at our age. Um, obviously, we're refinancing not on this side now. Um, so um, we've exited a lot of different parts of it. Yeah. I, again, it comes down to our short-term finance requirements is to acquire the site, take it to a certain level, and then refinance out. Um, like what we've done with Hexen. Yeah, so it, it depends. It goes back to our thing again, where we have or our plan. We never have a plan A. We've got our plan B, C, and things. Just in case plan A doesn't work. Knocking down and then something brand new, or are you trying to convert? these buildings we're allowed, to, we're, allowed to we're allowed to modify that one so right. because obviously it's got some like old architecture there and um, which is like protected um but like this one here when we bought like that garage which we'll go over it shortly that's that's actually got planned to approve the holiday lets so that they used to rent that out for holiday lets people staying here yeah. which we didn't we weren't really interested in but that's just going to be converted into a brand new house and so is that one as well so yeah. but they're both they'll be both Four, one five bed, one four bed. Right. Yeah, but it's like the specification as well. It's the location. There's a private school over the road there. Yeah, one of the best. In the yeah. So this skis brick is like a, an exclusive part of Southport. Right. So it's the, the, the values here are much higher than like even in Birkdale, for mm. example. Yeah. So build um, but the value for us is actually all the amenities that we sell as well so like the telecommunications wi-fi printing coffee um, and management fees as well so we we actually have a long-term interest in the building we, re we retain the management for the foreseeable future yeah grant thornton and um colliers they were the administrators to the receivers so that's when they they basically phoned us up and said we've got this site for you we're not putting it out to the open market um, you know, and then obviously. And is that how the CM3 sites have come through as well? Yeah, yeah, through similar, similar yeah. sort of, um, yeah, similar sort of avenues. Yeah. yeah, but they come from just connections that we built up over the last 20, 20 I'm years. Just gonna say, like, it's connections. Me. Where, and is yeah, a lot of that hard work, or I guess, has come from sort of Dave back in the day, and you guys are continuing the relationships, or is it all sort of like? Yeah, it's 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 like it's relationship management. Um, you know, and yeah, and we've we've always kept them. We buy stuff off them. On a regular basis. Yeah, it helps, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. So um, sometimes we won't actually go and acquire stuff. We'll actually just exchange on it, and then have the, the contract made assignable, and then we can sell it on. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they know if they come yeah. to you, then if it's a decent yeah. deal, mm -hmm. then the deal's yeah. going to get done. Yeah. You know. It really, it it really depends. If it does fluctuate round here, um, but some will start at maybe five hundred and fifty pound a month. For maybe for the, the larger officers, the four to five unit yeah. officers, that'll go up to maybe even eleven hundred pound a month. Yeah, and yeah. um, because people would rather, especially like just as I said earlier, come to one place, park their car outside, come into one area where they can do meetings. Whereas 
if you put it all together, if you go to a town centre like Southport where they've gone and pedestrianised like every, nearly every street. All right, that's a wrap then, guys. Hopefully you've seen, uh, you know, you've met the Websters, Jake, Dave and Curtis, and we've seen some of the sites, Ivy House and um, CM1 here. You've sort of heard about what the guys are doing with it and how they're sort of making money from it and bringing investors in on that as well. So uh, there you have it. Thanks for coming along. If you've got any questions, please ask us or put them in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you next time.